uh, my very dear son. First of all, thank you, Vishwai, for taking time out. The first board member to uh, take a session. So we are very glad from uh, the board also. So uh, this way tells about himself as engineer by profession and a fitness freak by person. He has worked in uh, diverse industries and domains. Currently working as an architect in uh, Wipro. And his belief is technology should be leveraged to create positive impact in people's uh, lives. So that's a very great thought. Let's uh, th start today's uh, IoT session uh, with this way. This way, all uh, yours. Thank you, Tusa. And thank you for organizing this uh, discussion. And thank you for such a lovely introduction. And yeah, being a fitness freak, not being a technical freak, I know everybody knows that. I never used to go to lab. So that's where my technology starts. So uh, yes, uh, into multiple industry from last few uh, years and currently with Wipro and have been uh, part of uh, uh, IoT uh, vertical and uh, developing quite a number of solutions around IoT since 2014 and 15. Uh, since the IoT has been evolved. So I have seen the, uh, uh, you can say, the growth of IoT and the adoption of IoT uh, since five to six years. So although the IoT has not been adopted very well so far, but uh, it's been quite, uh, you can say, appreciable solution and very emerging solution uh, in various industries. So what I'm going to do today as part of the session is uh, the title itself says that uh, how the IoT is modeling a better society. So I am going to, going to this is my agenda. So I'm going to talk something more about IoT uh, in my way of uh, believing and my way of understanding. Then I will talk about how the IoT can be part of our day-to-day -day life. Then how IoT has been adopted in different, uh, can say, uh, in the society, in the different different uh, areas, uh, industries, uh, uh, different aspects, uh, social issues, and all. And uh, along with that, I'll give try to give uh, interesting examples uh, or some few examples of where I have worked on. Um, so I have touched upon multiple industries and multiple domains so far in five to six years. So that is something my real-time experience I'll try to share. Then uh, along with that, I'll get into some use cases, the actual use cases where I've worked on. Try, I try to remember few use cases which I've worked on and currently working on. And uh, then I'll talk about uh, how do you approach a particular IoT problem statement and what is the myth behind IoT and how we can get out of the IoT myth and whenever somebody comes and tells about IoT, we want to build a solution around IoT, how we'll evaluate and what is the challenges you usually face and how we can approach the solution for IoT. That's something I'll tell. I'll tell a little bit of uh, reference tiers or layers or, or give an example of very simplified uh, solution, which I did it three, four years before. Uh, then I'll give you very high level reference to different, different platform protocols, devices, and then I'll give you some live demo. Currently, I'm working with four, five, eight, four, five different areas uh, which are running uh, part of my account and uh, at which part you have to stop the recording because those are all uh, current projects. So that's how we can conclude my session. Then you can start with question and answer. And if anybody has any question during my talk, please uh, stop me and, and I will try to answer as to the best of my knowledge. So let's get started. Okay. Thank you for joining. And uh, let me start my stopwatch. Okay. So, yes. <clears throat> so, Internet of Things. So, the name itself explains there are two aspects one is Internet and one is Things, which is nothing but device. So, how this Internet of Things actually are being so popular? So, things are nothing but devices, uh, di different physical devices, which 
uh, we have been seeing it from our childhood days and now when from last 20 25 years the internet being uh, our day to day life uh, the how the devices have been connected over internet uh, that is nothing but our iot so in simplified version when a, a interdependent interconnected devices connected with each other and monitor the changes in the environmental parameters or vitals or physical objects uh, changes and started sending uh, different data to the server or to the platform you know to do a certain level of uh, processing on top of it that is nothing but internet of things and and we build a solution around it so so this is something internet of things tells about so now when i say uh, internet of things uh, and it's a pretty buzzword so it's not like that this particular concept has come now so embedded system is there quite few decades and and there are sensors there are actuators which have been monitoring uh, different changes on the physical device and they also act on it or they also control it but it stops there so we don't do anything about those data so when the internet has come and been involved and been strong uh, then we started thinking about how we can get those data which has been getting generated in a physical devices to the platform or to a particular server and then you can start doing analysis on top of it or start studying those data and then start predicting certain things and start you can say do some kind of uh, predictive analysis or something uh, uh, you can say uh, or create some kind of visualizations or some kind of anomaly detection so that we can bring in some better values or better lifestyle or better you can say performance efficiency to different different services so that is something is the purpose behind building the internet of things solutions iot solutions right so <clears throat> so the most important part of uh, building iot solution is is purely different from a operational solutions your operational solutions are basically the solutions that you build to enable uh, or to maybe increase the value in the people's uh, day to day life but when it comes to internet of things or iot solutions more or less <clears throat> this actually stays a level above to the operational solution so what we do is we actually not interested in how the things are happening happily so we are more more or less interested in what are the anomalies what are the wrongs are happening so that we can avoid those things before it get occurs so basically something something like issues and uh, your uh, risk so so through internet of things we identify the risk and before it becomes an issue, we take the action, right? So that is where the IoT solution actually acts on it. So whenever a solution is going to be built or so when solution is going to be proposed, the most important part is whether it is an IoT solution or whether it is an operational solution. That is a very important part you have to think about it. You cannot just simply jump in and start looking into it, start collecting the data and start putting into the visualization dashboard and then the IoT solution is achieved, no. The most important part is whether it is an IoT solution. That's the first important thing what you are going to look into it and find out unless this solution is not an IoT solution, there is no point building an IoT solution. Ask them, go ahead and prepare an operational solution. Plus don't ask for an IoT solution because it is not going to help you at all, right? So I'll give you an example in a day-to-day -day life. I'll just imagine a very, very interesting aspect in day-to-day -day life and, and that implies that how this IoT solution is going to be a really, really uh, interesting factor in your life. So assume, so I, I look into my lifestyle. So assume I, 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 have, I, have, I set up my alarm. So my alarm beeps, uh, my, uh, my wearable beeps my alarm. I, I get up my alarm. By the time I get up my alarm, it's connected to uh, my smart home where my uh, geyser is connected. And according to the room temperature, now my geyser starts and make my uh, I'll make uh, the water ready for you can say uh, bath. So before I go to the bath, my toothbrush, toothbrush beeps and then I uh, brush my teeth. By the time 
my wearable is connected to the yoga class. So yoga class is started in my, uh, you can say, uh, screen. And uh, by the time I finish my brush and come back and start my yoga. So when I finish my yoga, my coffee is ready because the coffee kettle is a smart kettle is connected to my wearable. So the, as soon as my yoga stops, looking at my beeps and all, so pulses and all the coffee machine uh, uh, clicks on and uh, it uh, makes a copy for me. So now the coffee machine makes a copy according to my vitals, uh, the amount of sugar I have, the current pulse rate, uh, and everything that goes from my wearables, right? Now I have my, I had my coffee, I had, then I, I had my uh, shower and came out and I had my breakfast. So moment I finished my breakfast, then my breakfast contained my yoga details went to my fitness uh, coach or, or my daily routine. So that gets recorded. So now it is recording my whole lifestyle. So now I leave to my office and now moment I leave home, my curtains are closed my home uh, uh, electricity is now shut down. Everything is come to normal. Everything is down. And then I started uh, driving. So when I start driving, my car is a smart car. Now he started getting the feed on the road. So he got the, got the traffic details and he suggested me, the car suggested me a uh, better path to navigate to the office. Now when I reach office, my outlook is connected to my variables. Now the, my variables start beeping all the calls, all the meetings and everything. And then I start finishing my calls, my work and everything. I had my lunch. So maybe maybe I had a diet lunch. So it can suggest me, okay, this is the lunch today or you can go for a lunch, this kind of lunch today, depending on your today's workout. So now I finish my lunch, finish my day. On the way back home, probably I'm home alone. I want to cook or I want to order something. And depending on my today's whole diet, uh, maybe my mobile uh, can be on. Okay, this is a dish for you, or which is the suitable dish for me to to good for your day. So this is how the whole lifestyles can be better. So this is where I can see IoT sounds very interesting, sounds very uh, promising, but it, it is possible. And when it is possible, it is possible for everyone. So it doesn't matter whether you're rich, whether it's pure, whether you are in India, whether you're in US, whether you're in uh, a small city, tier one city, tier two city, doesn't matter. As long as the systems and solutions are available and they are accessible everywhere, this lifestyle is going to be unified. And, and there is no difference between the people living in a, a developing countries or living in a developed countries. Everybody's lifestyle will be unified. So this is where actually the IoT solutions can bring in the beauty into our life, okay? So this is something, an example I gave <clears throat> about IoT solutions uh, being in day-to-day -day life. Uh, so far, so good. Anybody has any question? Good evening, bye. I have one question. Yes. yes. Uh, like in the scenario you just described, uh, like is there uh, a possibility that some of the functions would be the operations part that you said earlier? Yes. So I told you uh, previously that the IoT solution sits on top of the operation solution, right? So, but IoT solution is not operation solution and operational solution is not IoT solutions. So the devices, physical devices are connected. We'll discuss further. I'll, I'll give an example in different, different industry, different, different uh, areas. Uh, probably you can see uh, the slide number three and where you can understand that uh, and, and, and you are rightly said that, okay, these solutions also on sits on top of the operation solution. We get data from operation solution, then we process data, and then we have certain level of, then you do certain level of anomaly detections, then we, then the IoT solution becomes successful. So yes, did I answer your question? To be specific, like, is there any particular activity that would be just operation wise and not IoT wise? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example uh, down the discussion. I have a lot of examples. I'll, I'll give you an example where uh, there is a, something called operations and it is not IoT solution for an Okay, so, so to just give you a 30 seconds example yeah. on it, uh, assume that uh, there, is a, there is a solution I'm going to, going to uh, <clears throat> demo you towards the end of the sessions. There is a solution, something like operational dashboards. For example, I am a supervisor of a warehouse, right? 
and i am doing a live operational uh, live tracking or tracking the people live uh, real time tracking uh, on the warehouse right if i am just only doing the real time tracking and the people are moving on the different different lane that is a operational solution is it giving any value to me no but when i want to build the iot solution on top of it then what i am going to do supposed to do on top of that operational solution is i will do a proximity check between vehicles and between people so that i can do a edge computing and tell the vehicle dude there is a person in front of you very close to you you might hit so that is iot solution or there are so many people on a particular lane and creating congestions the vehicle is not moving on the lane and that notification can come to the supervisor saying that okay there is a congestion on lane number 1 2 3 4 5 please next time onwards do some kind of action on it that is called iot solution so did you understand now what is operation what solution is and what is iot solution okay good okay so now i talk about the lifestyle so now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell how the iot solution is been penetrated in different different industries and has been started giving lot of uh, uh, values and as well as can be also uh, bringing lot of values over the time and how the iot solution is going to be very well accepted in the society so next one is uh, energy energy area so energy is actually the major uh, resource for any anywhere in the world if you are high source in energy you are you are a very developed or very well established country so how we can do it the smart energy i i did a, i did a solution on smart energy for uk so for a few of the warehouses so from there i thought about uh, what is smart energy energy distribution the the efficient way of energy distribution the efficient way of energy uh, you can say uh, utilizations and the efficient way of energy creation so that is the whole together is the smart energy right so if you have a sensor and which is monitoring that if there is any leakage in energy in the warehouse that you can save lot of energy if you have a sensor which will actually monitor the usage of the energy and over the time over the time what you do is you start monitoring the consumption of energy now you see that one month the energy is consumed assume that to a level of uh i don't know i forgot the energy uh uh you can say the unit uh maybe maybe assume in in number of unit uh, maybe we convert into the money so now one month he consumed something around uh, 1 million dollar next month it became 8 mil, uh, 0.5 million dollar other month it has become 1.2 million dollar so there is definitely something is going wrong something is going fishy right so so then we start looking into it why there is a lot of variation in month to month is there any energy leakage happening or is there any over utilization of energy or is there any any lack of observation or lack of some some level of uh, fishy things are happening in the warehouse and this is the consumption fluctuation happening right so this is all about smart energy system and the iot solution can bring in lot of values to it so that what you can do is you can bring in uniformity in the energy consumption and this extra energy that you are actually getting leaked can be utilized in somewhere else right that's where is the iot solution into the energy domain now farming now farming is the core of each and every you can say a core of economy right so now we cannot increase the farmland or we uh, cannot ha huh, sorry uh, is it okay to uh, share the uk thing that for smart energy you did a uh, small example yeah what are the example i told you the same thing so there are few warehouses okay uh, in two three different locations and uh, what you are doing is uh, they say that okay there is a fluctuation in the energy consumption okay so what we started doing is look uh, apart from india developing country in developed countries getting the energy bill is not easy so they usually don't give you the energy bill okay so unless and until you tell them that there is a problem in the energy energy consumption and then you go through a long process then only you will get to know what is the energy consumption details and all 
so with that all hectic stuff then you started getting the energy consumption details from the energy provider because uh, there are there are there are private companies which actually monitor or which actually uh, responsible for providing the energy so when you started getting the energy bills maybe maybe in terms of excel files or directly sometimes uh, dumped to our platform sometimes over the apis then we started aggregating all the data and month month by month we started doing the analytics on top of it then you found it there is a very interesting graph coming out right and then then we started giving to the people who actually uh, monitor uh, energy export and all and and then you deliver and then you found out okay there are some energy leakage happening or there are some bill also false false bills are coming that's how they that is how what is that is where the solution was there so did i answer it yeah yeah thank you okay perfect hey vishu akshay here i'm sorry akshay akshay uh, you are breaking who is talking this is akshay Sir. Hey Akshay. <laughs> <laughs> so Bishu, I have a simple question. Do you have any kind huh. of an high-level architecture? How you have set up this thing? I mean, is your people content that one? I I cannot provide you the uh, architecture of the solutions, but I have underneath uh, uh, down the PPT. Where I will show you the different tiers in the uh, IoT solution and different layers in the IoT solutions. Uh, what are the challenges you will see in the IoT solutions? All this stuff. So is that yeah, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that will be okay. I just wanted to uh, know from the connectivity part of it. You know, suppose you know when you are when you are acquiring this real-time data, hmm. what kind of connectivity or what kind of network? Uh, Say suppose uh, are you providing a redundant network to get the data, something like that. Probably no. Going forward, hmm. uh, we can discuss. Yeah. Carry Perfect. On. Okay. Good to know. So so that I will include that one as part of my discussions. Okay. Uh, my my because I I I didn't include uh, because I have use cases four five use cases and I will explain you four five use cases hmm. and I'll also explain you what are the devices. i have been used what are the protocols communication protocol has been used but i have not given you the architecture for it but i given you a simplified architectures mm. explaining the uh, tier layers and everything and sure. then if you have any specific question you can ask me uh, if time allows we can discuss uh, mm. on that okay sure. okay so because the topic of the uh, today's topic is more or less about how the iot is actually penetrated in the society so i'll try to spend oh, okay. another 4 5 minutes into all the industries where we actually iot then you get into the use cases and we'll explain about uh, different layer, layers tiers protocols communication channels what are the challenges what you do with the data where you store the data what kind of data you store where you'll do actually take care of uh, while building the solution i'll tell you everything Okay, okay. Okay. Perfect. So I spent eighteen minutes so far. Okay. So now I was talking about farming. In the farming, more or less smart agriculture, or or uh, so what you can do is uh, when you can introduce IoT, what we can bring in competitive between neighboring uh, farms. We can we can uh, we can start looking into the weather forecasting. We can start uh, monitor uh, monitor sorry monitoring the soil uh, uh, state right. So we can do a lot of things so that it can improvise your current level of output to a certain level of output right. So because we cannot increase the farmland, we cannot increase anything else. We don't have a control on the weather systems right. But at least we can. control our farming according to the weather system we can control our farming according to the soil state or we can control uh, our farming depending on on the neighbors uh, neighboring farms and and we can bring in lot of competitiveness so that is where the iot solution is going to help in the farming by healthcare healthcare is one of those industry or one of those uh, um, you can say domain which has adopted iot solution very smartly and i have done so many projects maybe three to four projects in healthcare beautiful projects so so connected health, connected uh, healthcare system uh, on the dialysis machine they want to monitor the uh, patient condition the aged patient condition not allow not asking them to come to the clinic connected their home 
uh, get their vitals details, uh, do analysis on top of it. But remember, when you are bringing in IoT solution in healthcare, you have to go through a lot of regulatory process because you are dealing with uh, uh, patients' data, patients' private data. So security is the most important thing. Data cannot be lost. Data cannot be stolen. Uh, your communication channel has to be really, really secure. So these are the few factors you have to deal with while building a solution in healthcare domain, right? I, I'll give you a couple of uh, examples where uh, I did a uh, healthcare solution and one of those solutions was uh, really interesting. Uh, so that brings in, uh, you can say, the life expectancy of the patient, that brings in, uh, we are talking about augmented reality due to IoT, right? So a doctor sitting in US can do uh, a, a surgery uh, patient in India, right? So these are the beauty of IoT, right? So then you go to manufacturing divisions. In the manufacturing divisions, uh, uh, this is nothing but industry. We have been talking about industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Now we are in industry 4.0, right? Industry 4.0 is nothing but is digitalization into the manufacturing domain, where the all the data from the different different machines. So basically, it is M2M, machine to machine communication. So different different machine has gone to cloud. So that is nothing but industry 4.0. So it enables a lot of supply, enables smart supply chain. So smart supply chain is what? Basically smartly managing your inventory. So you don't allow those inventory getting running out of it, uh, having uh, a lot of sensors in different, different racks, uh, in the refrigeration systems and everything. So Walmart, Gap, all these huge uh, retail companies, they, they follow this uh, smart supply chain uh, solution stuff. And a lot of, uh, actually, hardcore manufacturing divisions like automobile industry and all, they are pure industry 4.0 solution. So do a lot of, uh, uh, you can say, something I can give in a very interesting example. For example, the way uh, a healthcare division is also using augmented reality, the industry IoT, IIoT, IIoT is also can use augmented reality to fix some solution in the machines. Think about there, there is a ship in the middle of the sea and you want to fix something and, and you have export outside sea, you cannot ask the export to come, right? You can still use augmented reality and fix it, right? So that is the beauty of uh, IoT. Transport, transportation and logistics, I think everybody is using nowadays your, your Ola, your Uber, those are all IoT solutions, pure IoT solutions. They, they, they track your location, they, they uh, bring in the, ISMA, uh, you can say, the minimum travel distance or minimum uh, path for you. Uh, uh, logistic companies, uh, currently I'm working for logistic companies. So logistic companies, they do a lot of asset tracking. They do a lot of tracking of the shipments in different different modes over the sea, in air, on the road, and they bring in a lot of values uh, to the shipments. So, so yard management, yard management is the very, very important solution nowadays. Uh, whether it is shipyards, uh, whether it's the ads outside the ship, whether it is your uh, shipping company, or whether it is your transportation company. For example, you are a huge transportation com having a transportation company having 5,000 buses uh, with you. So you have to find out how, what is your best place to park your bus, right? That is nothing but your ad yard management solution. So these are the beautiful solutions that have been achieved through through IoT. Right. Then you go to infrastructure. So infrastructures, I think everybody is now uh, enjoying the IoT solution in infrastructures. Like, like you, we guys are buying uh, with the name of smart home. We guys are buying with the name of smart city. Right. They are selling all these things. Uh, but but the reality stuff is the waste management or or the toiletry management in in a in a toilet toilet uh, uh, in the hotels are the beautiful examples of it and we did solution around it so so we did solution uh, providing uh, you can say alerts that okay your your uh, toilet papers are running out of it your toilet rolls are running out of it your uh, your bathroom uh, you can say uh, i forgot the name so the scents inside the bathroom uh, are running out of it so these are all iot solutions and and uh, they are really bringing a lot of values right so then automotive and automobile. So automotive is railways and all, and automobile is your cars and all, right? So we know about smart cars or, or electronic connected cars and all, but I'll give you an example of automotive. For example, 
Automotive is a very interesting solution. We 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 actually I did a solution approach for automotive. I didn't work on automotive solution, but automotive solution. I give an example, like your trends, your automotive uh, are are running across over the uh, under the lane or in the tunnel. Uh, uh, across the sea, across the river, right? You don't have internet, right? So how do you build a solution for automotive? So what you can do is, this is a store on forward mechanism, basically. So what you can do is, for example, when a, when a, currently what happens is, how do you know that your train has reached here? What is the expected arrival time and all this stuff? This is automotive solution itself. So what they do is, moment moment the train passes through the platform, it gets the signal and then, then trips it. So similarly, a lot of things can happen. Uh, a lot of accidents can also uh, can be avoided for that. Your octray, uh, you can say, uh, those gates and all can be managed very well uh, due to automotive solution, right? And similarly, the accidents inside inside the train also can be managed. The derail or derail or or detachment of the buggies also can be managed due to automotive solution. But there are different protocols to be used because you don't have internet, so you have to have a local area network or LoRa band uh, uh, protocol to use to collect the data and you have the gateway, then you have to uh, work on the data, uh, process the data, then you can alert uh, to the uh, uh, station, not station master, maybe the uh, TT or to the driver, right? So that is nothing but your automated solution. Now, the most important part is the lot of global issues is IoT, IoT is giving, uh, uh, contributing towards global issues. Yes, climate changes. What are the factors actually uh, changing the climate? So we cannot sit in, uh, in, in the top of Himalayas, right? Or we cannot be in the middle of the sea, or we cannot be in the uh, places where uh, the you can say human cannot survive, but we can we can install devices. We can install monitoring devices, collect the data, and find out how the climate is changing. How uh, we can we can ensure that we can survive. Uh, there are a lot of animals which are actually extinguished due to of this climate change. So we can do a lot of things out of this IoT solution. So so yes, it is contributing a lot to society, and it has been adopted a lot uh, across different different domain. And uh, this is the beauty actually. So. So if anybody has uh, anything, um, uh, any question so far? Okay, I'll take it as no. So now I told told the good part of it, but I have not I have not told anything about the bad part of it. So yes, so because we are we are collecting data, and the most in, the, the what actually we are losing out of it, we are losing our privacy. So there is a privacy violation. So, because we are, uh, can someone be in the mute? I'm sorry. So, uh, we are we are also because we are we are sharing our uh, you are our data while traveling on the road. We are actually uh, uh, encouraging uh, security violation or safety breach, right? So, but uh, then then because uh, because the systems are actually automatically managed. Uh, then the, the controlling of the system is not centralized, it's getting decentralized, then there will be a lot of regulatory changes is also get encouraged, right? But yes, so every every good thing follows with certain level of negativity, but yes, there are solution behind it. If you can manage, if you can, uh, if there are bodies which are actually currently working on a lot of regulatory aspects, they're, they're working on security, a lot of protocols where you can actually enable security and safety, that's why the healthcare uh, solutions uh, are not approved at all as long as you don't take care of certain level of regulatory aspects in your solutions. So yes, uh, there are pros, there are cons, but 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 with my experience of five to six years, uh, I see a lot of pros with losing a little bit of uh, constraints. Uh, that is where I, I see IoT is bringing a lot of values to our life. So anybody has any questions? Sorry. Okay. So, this is Yeah. Huh. So, what is the underlying uh, uh, infrastructure? You need 5G, right? You have simple. No, we don't need 5G. We uh -huh. don't need 5G. We don't need 5G. So, 5G is nowhere there. And okay. why we're always thinking that 
uh, 5G is only you can enable. Yes, it can. It can. It can enable uh, our because IoT solution bring in uh, this. This a, a very voluminous data, and yes. we want to transfer a lot of data across it. So 5G can bring in a lot of. Uh, uh, it can enable the data transfer. Uh, but but we don't have 5G so far. The IoT solution is still built on built on uh, 4G, and and uh, and 3G also. And the underneath the edge computings and all not on uh, not on uh, Wi-Fi. So they are all their respective uh, native communication channel protocols. Did I answer so, your question? Yeah. Uh, no, I was looking for something else uh, mm -hmm. because. Uh, uh, like two years back, I bought a Helium uh, IoT device, okay, which is a long five, okay. Long five means uh, you know lower uh, one, okay. Yeah. So means uh, are you guys using those kind of devices? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it has its own network. Okay. So it is basically the, uh, like. Uh, uh, develop on its uh, it, it comes, uh, people network, okay? So people they bought yes, the it's a wide area network. Yeah. So are you guys using uh, rely on this kind of device only or what? Yes. No. No. It's, it's so so it's it's purely depend on the kind of solution you are building it. There is no specific device to be used when you are going to all kind of solutions. So, so when it comes to local wide area network, the LoRa, I was giving an example uh, for an automotive solution, right? And I will also right. talk about uh, this service max integrations where the MRI, CT scanner, are, or the industrial equipments are connected. Since industrial equipments uh, cannot be connected through BLE or, or uh, uh, you can say, uh, Bluetooth or low energy BLE or some other uh, communication channel because most of the times they are they are in a different level they are closed in inside the closed environment and a lot of noise are there so when there are a lot of noise you cannot rely on this BLE uh, bluetooth uh, communication the best communication was the local wide area network that is a lora one and we made a solution for uh, with using lora devices having a gateway connected to all those devices now the gateway is sitting outside so to the to the corner of the warehouse and all and then the gateway will start using Wi-Fi and transmitting data to the platform. But whereas the devices connected to docks or connected to industrial doors or connected to industrial lifts or connected to different different motors inside the uh, uh, inside the uh, you can say manufacturing sector, they are all uh, LoRa enabled. They they communicate over LoRa. Okay. So okay. yeah. So did I answer your question now? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. So yes, so these are the use cases, Aksha. Uh, I I will pick one by one use cases. And I'll tell you uh, the solutions I have. See, I I have a reference. I, this is not. This is there are basically three tiers in in solutioning, and and this all sits. Every solution sits like that. But there are technology. You can pick different technology. You can pick different communication channel. Uh, domain to domain, what are the challenges you face that are different? I will try to address those things in next 30 minutes. Okay. So, hmm. so huh. go back to that uh, architecture slide, um, the one you are showing. Yeah. Not this one. Ah, this one. Hmm. Now, uh, uh, during your solutioning, all these things, Hmm. Generally, what you uh, see in the market, people are adopting cloud uh, to store this IoT data on the cloud. On top of that, they're running the analytics, or do they prefer uh, you know on-prem kind of you know storage to get the data and do the analytics, something like that? What is the trend right now? Okay, so the trend is not like trend, Aksha. It's like which domain you are working on it. If you are in a healthcare domain, they will never go to cloud. And okay. I'll, I'll explain you. I'll explain you this solution. Because this of the, the data kind of... privacy and all. Those exactly things. because of the data privacy and all. But when it comes to logistic solutions, because the data is nothing to do with uh, uh, your personal privacy or all this stuff, uh, save, then then they are happy to store in cloud, right? So and and uh, because the cloud is becoming so popular. Think about the banking. The banking sector is the sector which has not yet adopted IoT 
so easily. Why? Because of the data privacy, right? Because all our banking solutions are inside the data center, right? And even if they want to go and build some kind of IoT solution, that will be only inside the data center. Only your your know your customer or or some level of informations which are actually moving gradually as a microservice uh, to the to the uh, cloud. But most of the solutions are sitting in data center in uh, huge banks. Okay, so, uh, but as a whole, uh, solutions, uh, IoT solutions, uh, healthcare is the only healthcare and the banking. These are the two domain which are restricting their data into the data center. But all other uh, domains are moving to cloud. And um, uh, one question is that um, while you know, uh, again coming back to the earlier question, while connecting to the cloud or uh, the on-premise. Do you need to send the data on the real time, or it is it depends on the use case or the requirement that whether the data need to be real time uh, fed or it can go for a lag? It's, it depends on the use case. I'll give you I'll give you the use case where you need real time, mm -hmm. and I'll give you use case uh, where you need uh, near real time. I'll give you use case where you need in batch. So, but most of the real time requirements are not doesn't go to platform. Tell me why, because there is a lag. So I'll give you, so for example, uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, this warehouse management where I'm trying to do, bringing in a lot of safety measurements, right? Mm. So in the warehouse, you have these MHE, right? These vehicles are there, which is actually lifting goods and moving around. And there are people also which are collecting goods from the different, different racks. So I was talking to the business group people, and they say that every year there are one or two incidents happens where the workers died because of the MHE hit, hmm. right? So those data that is a that is has to be that is a real time calculation to be done. So basically that solution is called uh, real time location tracking, right? RTLS. Hmm. So these RTLS solutions are to be done then and they are immediately on the floor. So that is what is called edge computing, right? In the IoT solution, there is something called edge computing and there is something called platform uh, solution or platform component, right? In IoT solution, there are two parts. One is southbound, one is northbound. So southbound is where all the devices are edge are sitting like this. You can see these edge tiers are all southbound. Mm. And when it comes to platform tier and enterprise tiers, they're all not found. They, they, they either they will sit in the data center or they will sit in uh, uh, in their local network uh, data center or they can be in the cloud. So that is that is where uh, the whole solution has been done. So when it comes to real time computing, like I told you, uh, if we are we are uh, considering a proximity breach, right? We tell that if a person, if there are two objects coming closer beyond one meter means less than one meter, there is a proximity breach and there is a danger signal. And that has to be calculated then and there. It's, if you send it to platform, get it calculated, come back and generate and beep, the person is gone, person is dying. So what they do is, so we actually uh, do a edge computing. Where you'll do the edge computing? Your edge computing cannot be done on the device because devices are, are uh, not doesn't have that computing capability where we'll do it you will put some kind of gateway with some memory into it some process processing capability into it and you have your solution in it. the data goes to gateway and sometimes they call in real uh, real time tracking solution they call it breeze basically they go to gateway immediately due to through the triangulation and they get the proximity details and immediately the gateway send uh, uh, send the data over wi-fi uh, to the to the batch or something uh, to the vehicle and vehicle will start beeping it's just matter of few milliseconds right and if you do that in platform your personal will die so that is where we need real time data transmission right and most of the time if because the internet is involved you cannot handle near, uh, real time at all so it will be always near real time right and mm -hmm. near real time can be achieved in the platform side and the batch process is batch process doesn't matter because you are not bothered about what is happening on the floor or on the field but you want to do certain level of analytics on top of it so you you collect the data in the uh, in the gateway uh, there will be uh, so there are there are five or ten or twenty devices connected to a gateway a gateway will aggregate the data or every 10 minutes gateway send data zip the data or, or club the data and send it to platform so that is a batch 
transmission so did i answer it the question mm. yeah yeah so on the gateway part we saw Hmm. What what kind of DB you are using? You know, it's a kind of no. No, a gateway gateway has a very uh, very low capability. I'll give an example of this solution, connected health solution. Okay, this is where exactly uh, the solution what I explained you. Right, we have it. We have the real time uh, edge computing. We also have a data store and forward mechanism, and we also have a remote device management as well. so i have not given you the architecture because it's very confidential but i'll explain you how it has been managed but i'll also have another solution direct solution so this is a solution uh, mm. for industrial equipments how did you handle and sometime before i was telling about the lora right so this is also there is a gateway but this gateway doesn't have any processing capability this gateway also does only the data aggregation and send it but think about uh, this if you are bringing in uh, some kind of capability to this gateways are very good processing capability they are all 500 gb a uh, 500 megabytes processing capability with lot of data storage capability uh, with wifi communi- wifi com- uh, uh, one way uh, uh, bluetooth and uh, wifi connectivity right so what you can do is uh, it is think a specific about, product so is this a specific product is there for the gateway or Ha huh, so the... whoever for example we have this we have this gateway right um uh, we are using for uh, in our house for uh, um, internet gateway right internet by but you have to provide you have to go and tell the provider that we want iot gateway so there are gateway which are iot enable so when i say iot enable gateway there lot of things has to be considered into it so that is where the challenge is coming these gateways are not iot enabled gateway because anybody can get into your gateway through ip address right but in this gateway nobody can get into because it has a processing capability into it you can do a edge computing on top of it there are certificates running it so so we can we can you can do a certificate management you can provision certificate deprovision certificate you can you can uh, uh, do a remote device management for example you can uh, connect to the gateway remotely and try to put push some kind of patches to the gateway the software to the gateway for example the uh, gateway is running with a software uh, the edge software uh, version 1.0 now you want to bring in some uh, new capability to the software processing power so that can be managed remotely so from the platform you can connect to this gateway remotely and push the software so there are platforms which can do uh, software configuration man they have software configuration management capability so they will publish the software whenever this gateway is not working and then publish the software the software will come here and then you have a get in the gateway you have the solution capability as soon as the software is get come to your software uh, that there, there are areas in the gateway where that is place for software the new mm-hmm. version has come in the way the mobile is works right it beeps you it ask you but here in case of gateway nobody is going to control right it has to be done automatically so then then your uh, gateway software will start installing the uh, new patch into it and these are the all capability can be built in gateway and we did it and we did it for one healthcare product uh, mm-hmm. the connected health solution i understood this uh, one more question is that which cloud uh, people are uh, you know <laughs> preferring I think there are two clouds which are which are completely ruling nowadays. The Europe is completely ruled by Azure, and Azure. the US is completely ruled by AWS. AWS. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to the use cases, right? There are very interesting use cases. I would like to spend some time here, and then I will uh, I'll tell something little bit about US. use cases and then i will relate those tiers uh, about this use case and uh, so i am dropping why... i have one more call thanks i'll call you later no problem yeah uh, have a good thanks, weekend sir. thank you yeah, bye 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 okay so anybody has any questions so far so in the previous uh, this is chandra here actually this way So previous slide we have shown shown service max right that is service mesh or service max actually that is that is your um, I don't know what is the service max only but I don't know whether it is max or this is the this is the case creation into your Salesforce what is you call that 
no actually what happens uh, see you told that the communication is happening through online as well as offline also right real time as well as offline also isn't it so what do, uh, so when you say offline how come the communication will happen offline means when you say offline what do you understand what do you mean by offline the bits will the bits will collect all the data and it keeps somewhere right and once that uh, that is available and that bits will retransmit the data that might be offline also right that is in batch processing so when i say off, offline means uh, uh, if i understand offline is the concept is not not the real time transmission the transmission is happening store and forward model am i right okay okay yes store. correct okay so assume that i'll i'll give you an example um what is offline and what is online so think about the solution uh, uh, probably that that is where i can explain we think about this solution where we are actually doing a connected health solution i have a dialysis machine okay and this dialysis machine is running on the patient so when the dialysis machine runs on the patient after the dialysis happens for 4 5 hours in a day in the night while the patient is sleeping it collects all those data so do you think that the dialysis machine will be connected to the internet during that process of time no right it is not it is yeah. not secure so right. so what happens is that point of time uh, all other processes in the dialysis dialysis machine related to iot they are all shut down okay so when we build the solution the uh, dialysis machine uh, company said that i want to control all your agent software in my device because so that i can stop and run whenever i want it so what they do is they control the software they start it whenever they want to start it and they stop it whenever they want to stop they usually stop it when the dialysis process is running once the dialysis process is over they collect all this data now they run all the its uh, software and now once the software ops then it get connected to the internet because it is it has wifi or bluetooth capability or to the gateway so it's it's connected to the uh, gateway over bluetooth now over bluetooth what they do is by the time the data is stored so once it's connected to the gateway so gateway is now be a via it's not a store and forward so we use the gateway to transmit data over internet because the devices are not internet enabled so devices are bluetooth enabled so they they use the bluetooth tunnel to transmit this vip protocol data uh, sorry bluetooth tunnel to transmit uh, you can say the real data over this vip tunnel Uh, they build a TCP IP tunnel on top of Bluetooth tunnel, and then they transmit the data through the gateway over internet to the platform. And that point of time, the gateway, the dialysis machine is connected, and otherwise the dialysis machine will stay offline. Similarly, MRI and CT scan. When the MRI and CT scan is running, that time the device will never get connected. So there are two ways of connecting. Either these devices are these are smart devices; they can connect to the gateway over Wi-Fi. or they can connect it to the gateway over ethernet and when the mri scan is running uh, then they remain shut down so those particular process stay offline and then once those process are done maybe after after certain time maybe there is a scheduled time okay midnight or something because they don't want to do real time monitoring of the scanning right because they they send those uh, images uh, huge images uh, over the batch maybe compressing it and then and 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 again encrypting it because they are all so you can say secure data and transfer over to uh, uh, over secure tunnel ssl tunnel uh, to the server so did i i don't know whether i answer your question yeah i got it no no my point was with respect to service mesh anyway you please carry on with your your question related to service max so this service max Okay, so I'll come back to the service max. Okay, so let me explain about about this particular tier. I'm losing out of time. Okay, please, please. so yeah, so Thank typically you. in the IoT solution there are three tiers. One is your edge tier where actually the devices are there and where you have this IoT edge component, the IoT edge gateway and all. Then you have the platform basically. So where you have uh, you process the data, aggregate the data, uh, store the data. or manage do the remote connection to the devices or do device provisioning and all 
and then from there you have enterprise solution enterprise tier where you have the enterprise solutions where you push it uh, to the big data push it to a data lake uh, all these things okay so this is how the whole iot solution uh, the complete solution look like sometimes we control it restricts in one and two and because it's a huge organization and you you run your solution for next four or five years then you move it to data lake or then you move it to big data then the, your enterprise tier comes to the picture okay it can be data center or it can be cloud and this also can be cloud also this platform tier also can be cloud okay so this is how sorry this is how the solution tiers look like in any iot solution in generic but your technology stack can be different uh, your device stack can be different your communication channel can be different from here to here or here to here uh, uh, here is always internet right so it differs but this is the standard tier in any iot solution now i this is horizontal and this is vertical so when it comes to vertically this is this give you more picture around it and and this has a little reference towards the azure uh, but forget about the technology we use it can be if it is aws iot then it will be different different uh, component or it will google iot it will be different if g predicts it will be different it differs but these things will remain same so you will always have a devices devices will have some kind of connectivity capability you may or may not have gateway uh, depending on the solution and then it will have connect to a basically intermediate layer between the uh, northbound and southbound typically some kind of hub it, the, your hub can be an rest uh, endpoint or soap endpoint or it can be uh, a queue also uh, message queue and all then you push the data to this hub and then you start uh, processing the data so when you start processing the data, if you want to do a real time means data processing and do some level of anomaly detection, you can do it here itself by doing, doing the processing the time and create the alerts and notification from there. Or you can move it after processing and normalizing the data, you can store it. Once you store it, you can, you can start moving into uh, your uh, data lake or data warehouse, or you can move the data for uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence processing and all but this happens later this is not real this is not uh, the time when the data comes to uh, the platform layer so this happens later uh, but from this platform layer your data visualization can come to the picture your web application uh, the user will be accessed through mobile the user can access to browser uh, so many ways and all so this is the and on every every uh, stage you have challenges i'll explain you down what are the challenges you actually see uh so far any question with these two slides okay so i'll move on to the next one which way we'll take a 30 second pause hmm. we'll take a quick uh, snap if everybody can switch on the uh, video we will take a snap uh, part already okay Please come, come on. Please, guys, come on camera. I can see. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have to stop presenting, right? You. Um... Stopped it. Sridhar, uh, Kanu, Subhasri, Jillu, Avishay. Sir, why? Hey, Pahalu, it's a good one. Sir, I'm using a desktop, so camera is not good. Sandeep, Sridhar, Alpatar, Sitchan, Sitchan. Paris picture is yet to come. Chandru, I heard your voice a long time. And guys, you are a techie, you can... Pull me out and throw me anywhere. <laughs> Parts are done? Everybody say cheese.
thank you okay thank you uh, this hmm. is a quick time check as well ha huh. uh i think 55 plus 5 one hour so i have to finish in next 15 20 minutes yep yep uh mm window good a lot of good questions are coming i happy this is a very very nice session <laughs> i like mm -hmm. it yeah uh, one hour one and a half hour is not enough but uh, still enough. i'll try to manage try to answer as much as possible uh let's see okay so this is this is one of the solution <clears throat> where the service look i am not a salesforce guy i it was a image i it was a picture i did i think this service max is nothing but uh, the solution uh, this is the salesforce solution which is which is responsible for creating the cases right you go and uh, you create a incident like you are in your system uh, like in your img any any organization has an incident to create and somebody support system comes and work on it similarly the salesforce has uh, uh, incident incidents created okay probably i think the it's called service mass i guess i forgot the exact name so don't don't go with that but it's a salesforce solution is connected with salesforce or integrated with salesforce and uh, where we actually create incident and why we create incident i'll explain you so what happens is this is these are all industrial equipments like uh, your industrial doors or industrial uh, lift uh, then a docking center where actually uh, the uh, you can say from the yard uh the, the trucks and huge vehicles comes and do unload and loading uh docking center uh, then you have uh you can say i forgot i'm forgetting all those equipments okay so what happens is every equipments has a maintenance timeline so what they do is there are certain business logic behind it and every for, i'll give an example this docks right docks you can see the docks in paradip uh, port the so docks goes up and goes down goes up and goes down goes up and down so they keep counting the numbers of times the docks is getting goes and go down so every time that the docks goes up and goes down it sends the data to the platform so we have a solution uh, built in thingworks platform and we keep counting those numbers the moment is 5000 times or 10000 times we create an incident in service max saying that this dock is ready for maintenance so that the maintenance team will go and start doing the maintenance before it stops so what i came to know look everywhere it is connected to money so what i came to know that if you do uh, do a credit team maintenance on those uh, industrial equipments uh, there so that you, the these equipments will run 24 hours 7 365 days the moment it stops it actually impacts uh, loss so if the dock stops that means you cannot do loading and unloading so if you cannot do loading and unloading you cannot deliver the products uh, and your supply chain uh, uh, chain actually breaks right and you have millions of dollar uh, loss over there right so how they can avoid it they have over their over their experience they found that if the dock moves up and down for 500 times if the lifts moves up and down for 500 times it is ready for maintenance so they it will go basically create a incident in the uh, salesforce service max and the incident will be monitored by the respective field people and they will come to the field uh, uh, on the field and they will maintain those docks or those equipments and all so this is a very simplified solution but it saves millions of money i'll give you an example it also monitors uh, the yard gate okay so the when the gate goes opens and closes it sends uh, uh, data so if there is any store, there is any theft happen in the yard or a vehicle is uh, as a, a, you can say uh, vehicle is moving uh, without knowing or or there is something is stolen from the warehouse and the vehicle is going out it has to go through uh, the gate right the gate opens and close opens a time which is actually not supposed to be open so there is a configured time for example the gate opens and closes between morning 6 o'clock to night 12 o'clock from about 12 o'clock to again next day morning 6 o'clock the gate is not supposed to open 
but if it opens and something is moving there that means it create a incident over there so that they will monitor it why the gate was open last midnight right so that is where the iot solution is bringing in values so i don't know so what was your question related to service max chandra no i thought actually in what happens in cloud world right there is a service hmm. message which is uh, inter communicating to outside world uh, i was um, uh, guessing is that same same no. or it's different actually that's no, what no, i think yeah it's not it's not the uh, communi- connecting is not the interface point it is the incident creator in salesforce okay okay got it thank you yeah so now what is next how much time i have i have another another 25 minutes right guys okay yeah so i was fine so what i'm doing is let me finish my my slide with my time and whatever the question and answer i can jump into different different slide and and uh, give my uh, best knowledge out of it so is that okay during our q and a we can extend q and a depending on the person's availability because i don't want to extend it because everybody has their uh, obligations on weekend and i don't want to go beyond one and a half hour if somebody has any question i have time i can extend myself for some time and we can discuss okay uh, but whatever i have planned for one and a half hour i'll try to finish it uh, in that time okay so now we talk a lot about uh, uh, solutioning and we talk a lot about uh, uh, the benefit but it is building a iot solution uh, is not that easy and uh, why it is not that easy because we don't have a standard body in place the way you, for healthcare domain you have a standard body uh, for automotive domain you have a standard body for iot solution there is no standard body so there is no standard protocol also been defined that okay this is the protocol which will be going to be used uh, for uh, iot solution or we don't have any standard iot devices also so we are in a adopting stage so when you are in a adopting stage we face lot of challenges while building the solution right so so that is that is a very that is a very important factor i thought i should i should bring in and and uh, let me explain you i think from last one hour of time uh, everybody would have uh, would have actually understood that uh, what is device what does a device responsible for what what you what data we get and uh, what do we do with the data and what is the purpose behind collecting the data and what are the solutions we are actually building behind the data and all right but now i'll tell you at each and every stage what is the challenge you usually face it and how we can actually over overcome those challenges now the most important part of iot is device right if your physical device is not capable of transmitting data or is not capable of monitoring the environmental changes then you cannot build iot solution so the most important challenge or the most most tough challenge tough i think a tough challenge in the iot solution is basically device to choose a right device for your right solution and why right device one is communication channel second one is the environment where actually you are building a solution if you are building a solution under the water if you are building a solution for mines under under the uh, seas uh, under the surface if you are building a solution inside a closed environment like warehouses and all you are if you are building a solution with lot of noise manufacturing sector right then you ha- or you are building a solution inside the hospital inside the clinic right so then it is very important for you to choose the right device so i'll give you an example for example you are building a solution and your solution is going to be utilized uh, utilized uh, inside the hospital in hospital one thing is you have patients second thing is you have so many medical devices which will be radiating lot of medical rays or radio rays right so we have to find out a device which should not be get disturbed we should not actually radiate certain certain rays which will be harmful to the patient and it should not be get disturbed with the radiation that is coming out from the medical devices this is very important 
That's the first step you have to look into. Think about you're building a solution for automotive or you're building a solution underneath the water. You're building a solution for mines 500 uh, feet down the uh, sea level, right? There you don't have any other communication channel to transmit the data outside your local area. So what you can do is, so the, the best thing what you can do is you can do a lot of edge computing, the real time tracking and all. Uh, and but they are you cannot use Wi-Fi because the internet will not be there. You cannot use BLE because the lot of industrial equipments are running and a lot of noise will be there. So the BLE or the Bluetooth will not work. Then you have to find out some local wide area network. So which is very popular nowadays. LoRa is very popular. There might be something else also, local wide area network, right? For example, uh, we can you also use Li-Fi, which is also a Wi-Fi communication, but transmits over uh, light, right? For which you don't need uh, Airtel service provider or, or Vodafone or any other service provider to transmit the data. You can use light and, and which is much faster because light transmit very fast, right? So these are the channels and these are the conditions you have to consider while building the solution or, or deciding on the device, okay? For example, I, I explained about uh, the warehouse, right? So when I'm explaining about the warehouse, in the warehouse, this proximity accuracy has to be really, really correct. If the accuracy is not correct, you, though you have built a solution, your vehicle will go and hit the person and person will die. So you cannot rely on Bluetooth. So what do you have to rely? You have to rely on some kind of device uh, called UWB, ultra wideband, which actually runs on certain radio waves. And the accuracy is very good, right? You can build a proximity triangulation between device between ultra wide band device and the uh, and another anchor device and build the pro and find out the distance between them, right? So these are the factors you have to consider while building. So you cannot just simply close your eyes and and pick a device and build a solution around it. Okay, so that is the first box. Second box is collecting data. Now I was talking about data collection and data transmission for second and third box. So now there is a question from Akshay, whether it has to be real time, whether it has to be uh, near real time, whether it has to be in the batch. So depending on the business, right? If the business needs it real time, it has to be real time, but real time you cannot transmit to the platform. So real time data transmission has to be done from the device, but the computation also has to be done in the local area. So that is near real, real time transmission and computation. Near real time can be achieved over internet and batch processes also can be achieved over internet, right? So that is a collection of the data. For example, I told about the solution for medical device. So the medical device, when it is working, it cannot be connected. And when it is collecting the data, it cannot transmit also. So, right? So it has to finish its work and collect and accumulate all the devices, all the data and then it transmits in a batch right so these are the these are the uh, you can say approach has to be considered depending on the business cases you are doing it right now send data okay i told about sending the data and collecting the data now uh, when it comes to processing the data so when the data goes out the processing can be done at two layers right as i explained to you, there are three layers one is edge layer, one is a, uh, in edge layer also you can process for edge computing and your platform layer also you can process for your other uh, alerts and notification exception management on, on your telemetry data. Usually the data is called telemetry data in IoT world. So when you process the data, then uh, remember one thing, when you're building the IoT solution, you usually don't get data in the same format from different, from, from different devices. Every device has its own way of collecting the data and structuring the data and sending to you. And, and device, you cannot tell device, okay, no, 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 I want my data to be 2KB, I want my data to be structured in this way, I want my data in JSON format, or I want my data in XML format, or I want my data in CSV format, no. You don't have a control on that. Device is, is the prime boss here. So you have to blindly take the data. Now your responsibility of your uh, in the platform is how you can process different different type of data or dip, data from the different source and bring into a normalized set. So that is called a normalized set. So unless you bring into a normalized set, you will not be able to utilize the data, right? 
So bringing into normalized state is not an easy task at all. Okay. So if you are collecting data from five different devices through five different uh, uh, frequency in five different structure, right? So that is that that you need a lot of expertise to come up with a normalized uh, message. Why I'm talking about telling about normalized message? Because once you process the data, because the processing and parsing capability is always with the platform. It is not with the consumer. So when I say consumer, the operational systems, or when I say the consumer, the consumer may be the, the visualization systems, which actually take the data and visualize on the map or, or, or create some report all this stuff right they don't have they don't know how to process the data right they are the consumer so the normalization of the data is very important and that 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 requires a lot of business knowledge so that requires actually a lot of business because you have to understand which data is coming what is the frequency of the data is coming and what is the sensitivity of the data and the third thing also remember when you are actually processing the data and storing the data so now come back to the story Okay, I forgot one thing actually while you're sending the data, I'll come back there. So when you're processing the data and storing the data, you have to also ensure that if you're dealing with healthcare product, healthcare solutions, you cannot store uh, patient information and all open in the database because that against the regulatories. Uh, so you have to encrypt the data and store into the database. And where are you going to store the database? or wherever the storage capability that has to be secure nobody can access it and oh, there will be restricted res access to be there there will, lot, there will be proper RBAC present and restricted access to that particular storage then only it it will be uh, accepted by the medical regulators okay so so every stage has a certain level of uh, a thought process depending on the kind of solution you are doing it now so i will go, go back to a step behind I'm talking about data transmission and data send. So when you're sending data, if if you're dealing with a solution where you are not bothered about the data loss or you are not bothered about the data accuracy, then you can send your data on any channel without considering anything. But if you are bothered about your data loss and you are bothered about your data privacy and accuracy, you cannot, you have to find out a very, very secure tunnel. So we have to create a private tunnel. Maybe we have built a solution uh, for a healthcare domain. We use TLS 1.2 with two uh, 1024.0024 into two. What is 2056? Uh, so 2056 bit certificate uh, been used to uh, create a uh, you can say a secure tunnel from between source and your destination. And it's not it's not only building the solution, uh, but building the tunnel is enough. The the if somebody is trying to hack your data, usually they hack at the endpoint, at the where the data is actually getting dumped, and the, where the data is coming out. So that endpoint also has to be really really restricted. So we have to ensure that that endpoint is actually restricted. Your tunnel has to be restricted data. And think about if somebody has breached your tunnel and get into your data. So if the data is open, data is raw, right? He can do anything with the data. Now you have to encrypt your data. So you have to encrypt your data while transferring the data on a secure tunnel. Now, what type of encryption? So depending on, on the encryption logic, you can do it. But because we are dealing with a medical device, we did a hybrid encryption. So we so we did, we did both symmetric and asymmetric encryption on the data. Okay, so I'll explain you what is symmetric and asymmetric in some other way, if you can call me, but we did symmetric and asymmetric. So basically we, did, we use, utilized uh, PKI infrastructure, public infrastructure to, uh, to hold a data encryption and data decryption model. So if somebody goes and understand what is PKI, I think he can understand what is, or how the symmetric and asymmetric is actually working. Go in the, so symmetric and asymmetric, so we data is got in, encrypted with uh, symmetric because why? Remember, when you encrypt the data, so I'm running out of time, 20, right? So when you encrypt the data, your data size increases, right? It increases by 30%, 40%. And think about you're transmitting one MB file and it increases by 30, 40%, and it becomes 1.3 MB, 1.4 MB, right? You have to be very, very careful. So asymmetric encryption uh, uh, increases a lot, uh, lot of data volume because what happens is 
it it adds a lot of bits and bits of uh, uh, dummy uh, data around your data so that nobody can get into it, like your Abhimanyu chakra, right? So that's why the asymmetric uh, is uh, is getting achieved uh, by uh, PK infrastructure and on 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 top of a very small value. And symmetric usually on top of the data, and it doesn't include a lot of volume to it. And it's very straightforward. You use the key and you decrypt the uh, data. So that is easy. And you usually do it in the first layer. And uh, on the second layer, the key that is used for encrypting the data, we use asymmetric so that we use the private key and public key uh, at both the parties. Because, because your public key will be available with uh, somebody else. If you are use the private key to encrypt the data, uh, encrypt the data, then the probably uh, sorry, you use the public key of the consumer while encrypting the data. The the consumer has to use the private key, and private key will be only used or only be with him only, right? So that is how the whole encryption and data data security has to be managed, depending on the kind of solution you are building it. <clears throat> now I told about data storage. You have to Take care of the data storage, yes. So nowadays, there's something called hot path and cold path. The hot path is nothing but if you want to do a certain level of immediate processing and all, you usually use hot path. So hot path, when you consider hot path, maybe your uh, uh, your document database, the Cosmos DB or, or the um, message queue and all considers hot path. Because we do immediate processing and then then you take out the data from out of it in matter of a week of time or hours of time. But when it comes to cold path, basically this basically your SQL storage and all as the cold path. So so that you can collect historical data out of it and your visualization uh, layer can use that data over API and do, do the visualization. And from the cold path, you send it to big data and do analytics on top of it. Or from the cold path, you archive it to uh, archival. So the cold path usually you configure it for three months or six months, not beyond that. But when it comes to healthcare project and all, your archival has to be there for next ten years. So you cannot remove your data for next ten years for audit purpose. So those are all norms for healthcare domain and all. So these are the challenges you usually face face during uh, solutioning building the solution for IoT. Um, yeah, I can talk more and more, but I have limited time. So, yes, anybody has any question? Anybody has any question in particular uh, section? Yeah, this way. So, when you process uh, that, uh, are you using ETL or can you put some kind of machine learning in between them? Uh, no, no, no. Machine learning and ETL, uh, ETL is usually used for uh, for data warehouse when you are actually. Uh, collecting data and pushing it to big data, because mm -hmm. because big, here itself you use ETL. Machine mm -hmm. learning is not used here. This one. So this processing of data is aggregating up the data, parsing the data because these devices are might be somebody is using uh, CSV, somebody using some raw format, and for example, if you are collecting data directly from the sensors, so they are all mm -hmm. um, they are not digital data. Okay, they are all binary data. There are hexa, hexa, hexa decimal data. Uh -huh. So you have to use respective uh, uh, parsing logic to pass the data, transform the data, and then normalize the data. So those are so you, this here you don't do ML and all. Some level of ML can happen once the data is normalized, and uh, not exactly machine learning. Um, machine learning not runs on here. So machine learning is different concept altogether. So you yeah. feed the data, then you do uh, machine learning. But here doesn't, so it's just passing, normalizing it, aggregating it, and bringing to a, a structure where uh, it will be a standard structure can be consumed by the consumer. Okay, consumer may be your operational system, may be uh, uh, some system, maybe some another interfacing system right you are you are interfacing uh, or providing data to another guy through api right so that is the where you do the processing so did i answer your question uh, yeah but uh, what am i actually question what you sell a lot of different devices okay so if you can do a model in the machine learning okay so you can normalize the data to figure it out so, so what is the purpose behind uh, machine learning the machine learning purpose is you feed the data and then build the artificial intelligence 
through the machine learning right you build yeah. you build the build the intelligence of a particular system through machine learning right i don't want to build any intelligence here i am collecting the data in a raw format and i have to pass the data and i have to normalize the data right so if you start building the machine learning these devices are sitting in the on the field itself uh, pahalu think about the yeah. situation uh, where it is uh, they are on the field they don't have lot of capability they don't have lot uh, right connectivity it it goes through lot of hurdles to reach here and here you want to do machine learning for certain level. for example your uh, i'll tell you some date uh, from some scenario machine learning cannot be used depending on the solution to solution it cannot be used for all kind of iot solution so the solution like asset tracking shipment tracking or your warehouse monitoring or something you don't need machine but but solution uh, you have to do some level of machine learning might be on on medical device data the scan data i remember uh, in the first project when we were working with uh, uh, paresh we used to do a lot of imaging solutioning right yeah. uh, paresh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and on there itself, you can do machine. Those kind of data can be utilized for machine learning and build some kind of intelligence out of it. So, because you want to build some level of intelligence on top of the data fed into it, and it will help the doctor to find out the chronic disease out of your scanned image, right? Mm -hmm. It depends right. on the kind of solution you are building it, right? Okay. So, anybody has any question? Okay, uh, this is last sections. I was I was telling about lot of lot of challenges here. Uh, I have given some level of, of my findings, different type of protocols that we are using in the platform, uh, the different type of devices. You can see the devices enabled with LoRa, Sigfox, BLE, ZigBee, uh, ZWeb, LTE, and all. Life. Uh, we will stop recording here or uh, some more time. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, oh. Maybe after this. So when I move it to demo, and uh, then uh, <clears throat> then we'll move. There are there are a lot of platforms, uh, one platforms, AWS IoT platform, Microsoft Azure IoT platform. Remember, these are not IoT platform. Actually, they are making full out of it. So so they are not IoT platform. When it comes to IoT platform, the G Predicts is IoT platform, ThingWorks is IoT platform, Bosch IoT is IoT platform, Ericsson IoT is. A, but when it the AWS Microsoft Azure and iBob comes and tell that okay these are IoT platform these are not actually IoT platform these are the platform which provides you certain level of services on top of which you can build the platform on top. okay so they have given certain components for device management they have given certain components for uh, uh, for device provisioning they have given certain comment of uh, component for visualization right but they cannot do a uh, you cannot build a ready-made IoT solution out of it. But when it comes to ThingWorks, they are all ready-made platform for building IoT solution. When it comes to G Predicts, the ready-made platform for industrial IoT solutions. So, so most of these vendors, my my uh, customers, that are all full, and and they said oh, we bought a license for Azure, and they said they have IoT platform. Why can't you build a solution in uh, next six weeks? So it's very difficult. So they, the my Microsoft team comes and brainwash that mind, and you have to be very careful when uh, when a customer comes and tell, oh, we we have a license for Azure IoT. You build a solution in the next week. It's not possible at all. Minimum minimum you need eight to twelve weeks to build a certain small MVP, and minimum you need six months to build a certain level of IoT solutions. Okay, so these Azure IoT or AWS IoT people come and brainwash their mind and say, okay, you can build a solution, IoT solution in a matter of six weeks or four weeks. It's not possible at all. You can connect some data, IoT, if the device is IoTized device, is IoT enabled device, you can connect, you can you can get the data, you can present the data, that's all you cannot do. You cannot do any anomaly, complex anomaly detection, you cannot do a notification model, you cannot do anything. In matter of four to six weeks, using those IoT uh, services is very difficult. And I'm giving you another uh, real truth: is the reference architecture provided by Azure, the reference architecture provided by AWS, they are the reference architecture honestly for building MVPs or building just POCs. Actually, they those reference architecture fall down when you actually start uh, building solution for 
uh, hundreds of devices, collecting data, millions of records per day. Uh, you have a voluminous data, they all fall down. So then you have to get out of those reference architecture. Then you have to build in customized solution on top of it. So be very, very patientful and be careful and while committing to customer saying that, okay, customer say, you have a reference architecture, Microsoft Azure team will come, you have a reference architecture, take it and build a solution. But that reference architecture most of the times falls back because they are all meant for building MVPs or POCs. They're not built for high-end solutions. We build it, we take out from Steam Analytics. Steam Analytics becomes so expensive, we had to throw out Steam Analytics and build in function apps to do processing the data. We build customized solution. We didn't have to go through IoT uh, um, hub. IoT hub is not resilient enough for device management. Okay. So very careful, as long as your device is IoT enabled device, the connectivity is very easy. But if the device is not an IoT enabled device, then you will struggle for connectivity. You have to build your edge component, you have to build your uh, your spy, uh, to put that particular spy into the device, and then it will build, bring the connectivity to, because devices most of the times are not smart device. So you have to be really, really careful while committing some solution, proposing some solution to the customer. Okay, so that's, ends my uh, discussion about IoT. You can stop the recording now. I, I want to give some quick demo, which currently running from my, with my customer.